One of the best methods for generating an image from an exciting one is to use the elements in the original image to create a new picture. This technique actually allows you to create a depth map from your photo, which you can then turn into different images with a very simple prompt. The examples you are currently watching in the video have been easily and quickly created using this simple technique with the powerful artificial intelligence of Flux and also with the fastest way possible. Stay with me until the end of the video where I'll fully teach you the details and the settings you need to use to get the best output no matter what type of system you have. So stick with me, it's very straightforward. We need a workflow which I'll place in the description of this video so you can download it from there and easily run it in Comfy UI. If you're hearing about Comfy UI for the first time, make sure watch this video, the one shown here where I explain in detail how to install and use Comfy UI on your system. This control net in this video is called Depth Map. You can create a depth map from your image, which can then be used to generate other images. In Depth Map control net, the image is processed to detect how close or far objects are from the camera. Objects closer to the camera appear in lighter colors, like white or light gray on the depth map, while objects that are further away appear in darker colors, like dark gray or black. In simpler terms, close objects to the camera will appear cleaner and more prominent in the final image because the model understands that these parts should stand out more. Farther objects are less noticeable and appear more in the background as they are shown in darker shades on the depth map and are interpreted by the model as background details. So, depth map control net helps make the final image look more three-dimensional, where closer things look sharper and things further away look softer or with fewer details. But can you control net utilize edge detection to outline the boundaries and shapes within an image? Totally, Canny Control Net is ideal for preserving edge structures and detail outlines, while Depth Map Control Net focuses on maintaining depth information to give a more realistic scene of space and perspective. So, depending on our needs, we should know which control net to use. And if you don't know what Canny is, I explained it fully in this video as well. So, feel free to check it out and use that too. I'm planning to teach you all the control nets available in detail, so make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss those videos. On this channel, you can find professional tutorials in simple language with very precise details. You can see it in the comments as well, which are very kind and I really appreciate it. Feel free to confirm my words in the comments on this post if I'm right, my dear friends. Okay, now I explain the details of this workflow from the beginning. Here in the first note, we are using the main flux model and for the text encoders I'm using these two models. All the details on how to download flux dev, install it on your system and use it in any step mode to achieve very high speed and very high quality covered in this video. So I won't explain it all here. You can see the full explanation in that video and I strongly recommend watching it especially if you want to generate images quickly and efficiently. To achieve fast generation, you absolutely need to install the 8 step version of Flux on your system, as we don't have time to explain everything here. The workflow section you are seeing is fully covered in that video, where you will learn how to set up this part, so I won't go over it again. In the LoRa section, you must active the 8 step LoRa, and these LoRas are optional that can add a specific size to your images. You can choose to add them or leave them off entirely. I've provided download links all these LoRa's in the description. Once you've selected your models, we come to the next section which is the most important part, our depth map. You must download this control net model. You'll follow the link I'll put in the description and in this page, download this model using this button and then place it in the Comfy UI main folder and models folder and then control net folder. After that, when you open Comfy UI, simply click the refresh button once for the model to load. Then you can select it here. In this note, set the option to depth. And for this preprocessor, just search for depth. It will show you a few preprocessors. I recommend 
this specific preprocessor as I've tested the others. This is the best preprocessor in this list. Others either have lower accuracy, give errors, or are not compatible with this model. So make sure to choose this depth anything version 2 preprocessor. Now in this section, you just need to load your image, any image you like, by dragging and dropping it here. Based on the resolution of your image, you can select a resolution here. Usually we consider the width. For example, whatever the width of this image is, you can enter it here. The flux guidance section is also very important as it can yield different results. If you decrease the amount of the flux guidance, it pays less attention to your prompt and relies more on its own creativity. And also the higher it is, the higher the saturation of your image giving you better color intensity. I've gotten good result between 3.5 and 4.8 but you can test it on your own image. The most critical node we need to pay attention to in this tutorial is the apply control net node. By combining the first and the third option, you can determine what your output will be. I explain each setting thoroughly so you can understand what each one means. The first option, strength, determines the influence of the control net and the depth map you created. The closer you set it to one, the more strictly it follows this map but the AI's creativity decreases. For example, if I set this to 0.5, it won't consider the depth map exactly, but it still account for it, possibly causing minor shifts in the line positions or slight left-right adjustment in the shadows. The lower you set this value, the more freedom the AI has to slightly modify and adjust the map, while still preserving the main structure. Conversely, the higher you set it, the closer it adheres to the map, keeping it strict and consistent. You can adjust this setting to get different outcomes based on each configuration. The start percent parameter lets you specify where to begin considering this map. Given that you're using ADASAP since the Flux Turbo LoRa is active here, you can specify from which step to consider this effect as a percentage. For example, if you set it to 0.1, it will start applying control net from 10% of the steps, meaning it progresses through the initial 10% before engaging control net. However, we typically set the start at zero so that it starts working with our map right from the beginning. The end percent setting determines when to stop considering this map, essentially when it stops using the map's guidance. For instance, if we set this to 0.5, that means 50%. It means that after four steps, control net will stop using the map, allowing the AI to engage its own creativity. This way, for the first four steps, the image is structured based on the map. But from step four onward, the AI takes creative control. For the strength setting, you can experiment which values between 0 0.35 and 0.75 or even go up to 0.85 for certain images. The optimal range typically falls between 0.35 and 0.85, but going even higher can also yield good results. The end person value depends on how much influence you want the control net to have on your image. The higher it is, the longer control net's impact on your image. This determines the control net's strength and how many steps it applies. Here you can specify the image size as well, although it doesn't have to match exactly with your original image. But just be aware that other sizes might cause cropping, resulting in parts of the image being cut off. As for the sampler, I use Euler, but you can select any sampler you prefer and you can also set random noise to randomize and after completing all the settings go to the prompt section where you can give any prompt you like to flux for instance i have the main prompt for this image and i might tell ChatGPT to modify it like changing apple to planet earth how you can use it, just open the link for ChatGPT and tell it or tell him I have a prompt and I want you to replace the apple by planet Earth. 
and give me the new prompt. Very simple, just like that. And ChatGPT will give you a new prompt by replacing Apple to planet Earth. And then you can copy the new prompt and here paste it to your prompt section in your workflow and hit Q prompt to receive a new image under the same conditions as your original one. Just remember the first time you hit the Q prompt, the preprocessor will start downloading. So you'll need to wait until the download is complete. I've included some example images in the video that demonstrates these settings. You can try those settings out for yourself. I've provided the images I've generated along with the workflow setting in a zip file for supporters on my Patreon page where you can download them and view each setting and its result. But the primary workflow for this project is available for free in the description of this post. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next videos.